Last week we were discussing the companions, the beloved companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba al-Kiram, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. And if you remember, I mentioned that all the Sahaba in their own ways, they were all had many qualities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these companions were specifically chosen for the companionship of, of our beloved Prophet, beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, all the qualities between the Sahaba were then accumulated in some of the specific, more specific Sahaba, whom then became the Khalifs of this Ummah. When Rasulullah passed away from this world, his mission the propagation of Islam, the mission of Islam, to take the Islam and this effort further. These Khalifs were specifically chosen, namely Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. And after Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. And after Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala and after him Sayyidina Ali, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala Once Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Talha, Hazrat Zubair, they were all stood on a mountain with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And suddenly the mountains started to shake and tremble. The rocks of the mountains started shaking. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he stated stop shaking because at this moment in time a Nabi and Siddiqeen and Shuhada, the martyrs, the Siddiqin, the righteous people are stand, standing upon you. And it comes in the Riwayat, the mountain instantly stop shaking, stop trembling. Various numerous ahadith where Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentions the virtues of his khalifs Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala Umar radiallahu ta'ala Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala Once he said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala Eh hey Umar Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and said, hey Abu Bakr You are the first amongst my ummah from the nation of my ummah, you are the first to enter into paradise. And at the time of Hawze Kawthar, where I'm going to stand and quench the thirst of my people of my ummah and intercede for my people the intercede for the sinful people of my ummah this ko hum shafaat kehte hain iske liye hum duaein karte hain jisko kaha ke rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki khidmat mein ja kar hum hazir hote hain wahan when we go to for the ziyarah of madina munawwara rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to do salam 
we ask for that intercession to shafaat ke liye hum request karte hain so he said at the holy kausar at the time when i shall intercede for my sinful people of my ummah abu bakr you shall be the one who is most closest to me ab sabse zyada mujhse qareeb hoge and he said abu bakr you are the only person who was next to me in the cave of thor i'm going to mention that story as well today he said regarding hazrat umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in the past nations there has been muhaddisin and if there is a muhaddis in my ummah is it sayyidna umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala because he was the one in according to his will according to his understanding i am not sure presumably there was about 23 to 25 occasions where some issue had been issue had occurred between the sahaba and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had discussed the issue with his companions and he made a mashwara with them and he seeked their opinions on the matter and the opinion suggested by hazrat umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the one according to which the revelation came from the skies and this was many times so he is the muhaddis of my ummah kon sayyidina umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala once he said regarding sayyidina usman ibn affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ay usman the angels shy away from you why should i die फरिश्ते उस्मान फरिश्ते तुमसे शर्म करते हया करते मैं क्यों ना करूं अल्लाह का नबी होगा और वंस ही सेड रिगार्डिंग अदर टू उस्मान रजी अल्लाह तआला एवरी प्रॉफिट हैज अ स्पेशल कंपेनियन स्पेशल कंपेनियन आई नो इफ आई वाज टू से ना इन आवर लैंग्वेज से खास दोस्त एक खास खास दोस्त वे यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट व्हाट टू से एंड हाउ टू से इट यू नो दिस वी सो क्लोज वी डोंट हैव टू थिंक हाउ टू से एंड व्हाट टू से ही सेड उस्मान इज माय स्पेशल कॉम एवरी nabi has a special companion usman is my special companion radiyallahu ta'ala and said in jannat usman shall be my companion in jannat usman shall be my companion these are huge virtues for these khalifs once he said to sayyidina ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Ali do you not wish that you have the same connection with me like Sayyidina Musa had with his brother Harun alayhi salam do you not wish you have the same connection with me like both brothers had Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun alayhi salam on one day an expedition Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one night before he mentioned in front of hundreds of sahaba the tomorrow I'm not going to read detail of the story what you Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala 
Tomorrow I am going to hand over this flag to a person whom has love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deep in his heart deeply rooted in his heart love of Allah love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is deeply rooted in his heart and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deeply love this person from their heart I'm going to give this flag to that person tomorrow Everybody was you know, anxious and suspicious. Who is it going to be? There was words going around between the Sahaba. And then when tomorrow morning came, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in front of all the Sahaba, he called Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and gave the flag in his hand. Kittibari fazilat. It is a shahada. A witness from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you remember I said I'd be specifically talking about Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala in today's, uh, uh, today's lecture inshallah. So these virtues they gave right to these four sahaba specifically to take the mission of Islam forward and as I mentioned last week Rasulullah sallallahu once said that before my time the prophets were sent one after the another it even came a time where two or three prophets were at the same time were in the different places it came a time but after me so a prophet replaced a prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am the last prophet. Ana khatamun nabiyyin. I am the seal of the prophets. Nubuwat ki muhar lag gayi. Finally. Khatamun nabiyyin. La nabiyya ba'di. There is no prophet after me. Juthe to honge. Dajjal or kazaab. So, I am a man of you, I am a man of you. I am a man of you. There is no prophecy. Haan. What you will see, you will see Khulafa. You will see the Khalifs. And that's the chain of the Khalifs that came into existence of the passing away of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala a extremely respected person in the whole of the Arab Peninsula a well known businessman well known as an honest businessman a tradesman a tradesperson had connections with a lot of other tribes and had a very good connection with many other cities and the very uh, the VIPs of other uh, tribes and himself he was classed as a VIP in Mecca and had a close connection even before Rasulullah sallallahu announced the prophecy prophethood he had a close connection with Rasulullah sallallahu and as soon as Rasulullah sallallahu came from the cave of Hira and he mentioned to his closest people that this is what happened and I have been given a crown, the crown of prophecy and prophethood has been placed on my head. And these are the first verses of revelation which have been revealed upon me. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala without any hesitation. You know, a, a person hesitates a, a short while to accept something. No. Without any hesitation at all 
without having a doubt for a second he placed his hand in the hand, in the blessed hands of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to take the bayat and bayat if i was to explain to you in two words a spiritual contract bayat usko kehte hain spiritual contract it's a spiritual contract bayat without any hesitation and this this was not the first it also happened a second time as well and that's a long story i'm not going into the detail of the story that was we all know mashallah basics we all know the miraj when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam part of the night he was taken from makkatul mukarrama to baitul maqdis where he led all the prophets in salah and from there to the first sky second third fourth and each sky he met all different prophets and above the seven skies sidratul muntaha and there a special conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took place. And some of the muhaddisin, they mention, I was mentioned yesterday in the hadith, the attahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned these praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in reply, as-salam, came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assalamu alayka ayyuhal nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh subhanahu you know when we think of the background and the context with these things have been revealed it gives more pleasure when you read this in the namaz he said assalamu alayka ayyuhal nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and the muhaddisin they even at that, that instance in that moment rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not only take away those especially the most closest <laughs> bounties and the mercies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon himself only he said what did he say assalamu alayna Well, now we we all 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 of us until the day of qiyamah we all take your blessings upon us you could have said assalamu alayya i take those blessings for myself assalamu alayna and wa ala ibadillahi salih and for those O Allah, on upon the, on your those righteous servants, specifically. And then he said, he reaffirmed the shahada by saying, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu." So what I was trying to say, at that moment, all this happened in a part of the night. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned back in that part of night, and when he returned back to Mecca, the huge journey. We see the jannah, see the jahannam, the punishments in jannah and jahannam. And he came back before, just before the Fajr salah. And in the morning after Fajr, when he related this story to the Sahaba. the munafiqi the hypocrites said oh this is the exact right time to conspire against him now who is going to believe this who is going to believe this and the first person they targeted was sayyidina abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala 
because they, 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 they knew the close connection and they wanted to break this close connection because it was they, in their best interest to destroy this connection. In their eyes, it wasn't a healthy connection. So they approached Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr? Yes. If somebody says, you know, at the night time, I went to Jerusalem and then from there went to the first sky, second sky, above the skies, and this and so, this, that, this, etc., etc. And then I came back, and before the night had passed, before the dawn, I was back here. Would you believe that? So, who is it regarding? What's he about? He said, your friend, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is saying things like that. He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amanna wa saddaqna. I believe, I believe, I believe. I reaffirm that I believe what he has said is absolutely correct and true. I've got no hesitation. They failed. So these were the two main occasions when Sayyidina Abu Bakr stood firm with our beloved Prophet Muhammad. And throughout the 13 years of Makkah, the advice given by Sayyidina Abu Bakr his firm stand for Islam, the wealth he has spent in the mission and propagating Islam, the amount of slaves who had become, who had entered into the fold of Islam and were being physically tortured. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala, Amir bin Fuhira radiallahu ta'ala, Jariya radiallahu ta'ala, Nahdiya radiallahu ta'ala. All these men and women who were slaves of Makkah, who entered into the fold of Islam, they were physically being tortured. And the screams were being heard in the streets of Makkah. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala was the person who spent his wealth freed these slaves, uh, he bought these slaves and freed them. <coughs> that was his remarkable, firm help towards Rasulullah And then the, the story of Hijrat comes into, into play. When Rasulullah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala narrates, that once Rasulullah came with his face hidden at a time when he normally wouldn't come to our house. And he secretly said to Abu Bakr, I have been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the hijrah to Medina. He said, Ya Rasulullah, am I to assist you in that? Come with you? Can I, can I be your companion? He said, Yes, you are one who's going to be with me. And this story is fascinating and the remarkable and miraculous thing that has happened before they even reach to Madina Munawra. This is what I want to mention inshallah to you next week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to and whatever has been said. Give us the love, deep love of this Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. Each one of them is a guiding star for us. We should never ever forget